we have right here an Atari 2600 development system called a FROB. It attaches to an Apple II. It provides all the tools that you need to do debugging and as ROM emulation. You provide the assembler. So in this case, we're going to use Edasm for this purpose. And I have a little piece of code that we've built for this. We'll take and boot into our little assembler here, and we will assemble this code right here. And yes, I'll be making little videos of this as I get various parts of this thing running here, and we'll do a much longer video once everything's running. Take and do a catalog. And we have a little test program called Rainbow, which I will take and load in. This is actually coming off of my FujiNet right here. So using the disk 2 emulation. Okay, there we go. We'll take and assemble this. and let it do its thing as it assembles. And you can see this thing assembling in real time. Oof. But it goes. This program's not too bad, so it won't take too long. It just displays a nice little rainbow using the background color registers on the screen. There we go. Ripping right through. We should be done in just a moment. And yes, you have to take and build the screen on a VCS by hand. So there we go. Successful assembly. No errors. We're ready to go. And at this point, all you need to do is switch the disk real quick. And one PR number six later, we're in the FROB environment. Now the tool that we need to use here to take, we need to take and load that binary file that we just did into the FROB memory space. And we will use fload for that. Okay, what slot is the FROB in? It's in one. Name of the file is going to be rainbow.obj0. And we're ready for disk load. I will swap the disk in and we will do the disk load. Okay, disk swapped in from the web interface and yep, there we go. Is it a 4K file? Yes, it is. Download process is now complete. And now the binary is now sitting in the FROB memory. So it's in two places right now. So if I take and go into the monitor and we look, at location 8000, that's where it loads this into the 32K memory space. We see the local copy loaded into the Apple II, but right now the Apple has control of the FROB, so I can do, for example, talk to the expansion register for slot one and tell it I want to look at the first page of FROB memory. And now if I do a C100L at the expansion card memory, we see that the code is now loaded in there. Now we did the load, but we need to do one more thing, two more things before the 2600 can actually use this. The first thing we need to do is we need to set the start address. Now on a 6502, the start address is in the very last page of memory. In this case, it's going to be page F, and it's the start address, so low byte, high byte, starting at F000, because that's where my code starts. That's the first thing. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell the FROB that it needs to transfer control by setting bit 4 of the status register so that it transfers control over to the VCS. Once we do that, the VCS can now run the program, and if we turn it on, we have our rainbow display. 
So yeah, I mean, there we go. First major thing completed here, guys. More to come, but that's kind of the basic workflow of getting code in. And yeah, because uh, the uh, because the memory is here on the Apple II, you have to and you have to flip it back and forth. You can switch the register back and forth. And you'll see it drops here as it transfers control back to the Apple. But I can go in and yeah, you can make changes to the code and do different things. So you can take and make a change here, reset the register, and then flip back control. I'll do a better example of this later. But for now, I'll just end the video here.